everyone and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Analyst. We are in chapter 2 and we are looking at the sample questions on this particular chapter. Before we get into the questions, I would like to tell you we'll be having three questions from this chapter. As the chapter is small, uh, the percentage share is only about three questions from this particular chapter. So let's quickly get started with question number one. Which of the following statements best expresses the types of information that must be tracked during testing to enable adequate monitoring and control of the testing project? So we know from the monitoring and control already in the previous tutorials that there are certain matrices which can be measured with the help of uh, different matrices. So we know the primary dimensions, I think, and that's a, that's a very straightforward answer about if you remember the uh, matrices here. So let's look at option A. Uh, how many defects are introduced by each developer? So adequate steps may be taken. Uh, I think that's not the way you monitor. It could be one of the matrices to be monitored probably but not a good one. B. How many test cases were passed by each tester? So it can be used to motivate to be more effective. Uh, tracking of the past tests by each tester could be one thing but that cannot be used to do any kind of evaluation professionally that how many testers have passed because it all depends on application not on the tester so if the test case passes or fails and how many defects they each one have identified generally we don't go on individual so that's not a good practice the percentage of passed and failed test cases at given points in time whereas the number of executed versus not executed test cases is less relevant I think that's another thing which is not so relevant to be considered as a part of the uh, monitoring point of view. But if you look at D, it does cover the primary dimensions of uh, monitoring, that is the tracking and measurement of defect, test, coverage, as well as product risk. We have five primary dimensions, if you remember, defects, test, coverage, product risk, and confidence. And these are the four. So the right answer here is D. Let's look at question number two. According to the syllabus, which of the following would be the most effective method of communication between testing members who are distributed across several time zones? So this is taken from the tutorial which we talk about the uh, distributed outsource and in-source teams. And uh, of course, uh, this is also a straightforward question. A, weekly mandatory all personal meetings. As you know that the team is distributed across several time zones, uh, personal meetings cannot take place uh, and it's not recommended. B, accepting frequent bills from the developers to keep all testers working on the same version at the same time. This is a little difficult thing because you are in several time zones, different time zones, then of course you cannot have the synchronization of working at the same version at the same time. C, Skype meeting for personal interaction. Personal interaction could be uh, not professional because if it was professional, of course, that's a way to do the uh, effective communication, having Skype meetings because you are distributed, but not for personal interaction. That's how they switch the option meaning. But if you look at D, accurate recording of defect information in the defect tracking system, Yes, that's the best way to keep an eye on all the correct information from different zones so that when the other zone works on it, they get the relevant information. So tracking and logging of the information is one of the key area. So the right answer is D here. Let's look at the next number three. It's a scenario based question. So you need to be have uh, you're very careful when you read the question and start pointing out the important aspects of the scenario. A project to develop a foreign exchange automated telling machine for an airport has been planned and a risk assessment has shown that there are three key risk areas. There is a risk that usability will be a problem for visually impaired users because the operation requires viewing several screens in sequence with relatively small text. So the very first risk is about usability. You should pen down these things when you are working in examination. This has been assessed as medium likelihood with high impact. So assessment details are also given to you. This has been assessed as medium likelihood and high impact. That's okay. There is a risk that response will be relatively slow because the foreign exchange rates will be checked before each transaction. 
this has been assessed as medium likelihood with medium impact that's just because it might people may wait for the transactions to take place uh, between the exchange there is a risk that accuracy of the calculation could lead to cumulative errors yeah that's the relation to the uh, internal error as well about the calculations performed on the uh, calculation of the values uh, between different currencies this has been addressed as low likelihood but high impact low likelihood because generally you say that the calculations may not go wrong but if it in case goes wrong it will have a high impact of course now the question the test strategy currently requires performance testing during system test usability testing during user acceptance testing and accurate test at every test level the project schedule is under time pressure which of the following possible risk mitigation action should be prioritized highest so now here we already know we have got the risk we have got the assessment done we have got their likelihood and impact further based on the strategy they are asking you which of these risk is not uh, assessed correctly so based on the strategy you need to synchronize your risk assessment so let's look at the option a review the calculation algorithms and work with specialist to define a data set for the calculation test okay let's keep this on hold seems to be good b defer usability testing until uat and recruit visually impaired testers to join uat team and that's not actually a professional way of doing the same you would be having a uat team in your organization to do that job for you c allow access to the system for usability testing during integration as you see that it is being having a medium likelihood with high impact and the strategy is also in line with that so we should not wait till the uat rather it should be pushed up so that you can start right from integration because the highest severity of the risk what you have is about usability so c seems to be absolutely fine as of now d spend time with developers to identify operational scenarios to test performance um i think performance is fine because uh, it is only related to the exchange rates so we cannot uh, do anything on that but comparatively if you look all the options to a certain extent uh, some of these options like a and d are little relevant which can be picked up but before when you compare that with c that's the most important option which can be pushed up so move usability testing in integration rather than waiting for user acceptance test to happen so the right answer here is c rather this is what we have got from this particular chapter three questions to understand as you will be having only three questions from in the examination as well so prepare well for the same in case you have any queries feel free to comment below i'll be there to address your queries and assist you for the preparation thanks for watching the video team till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding happy learning